Hello everyone, this is Mr. P. On today's lesson, we're going to take a look at the indigenous peoples of Canada. So, a brief look at the indigenous peoples of Canada. So, we have a question. Who were the first people to live in Canada? Europeans or the indigenous peoples? Well, if you said the indigenous peoples, you're right. It was the indigenous peoples. Indigenous peoples are those whose ancestors were the original inhabitants of Canada, the first people of Canada. They are divided in three groups. First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. The First Nations is made up of many smaller groups, such as the Iroquois, Algonquin, Mi'kmaq, etc. So let's take a look at the First Nations first. There are over 634 recognized First Nations governments or bands. They live south of the Arctic coast. Each nation has its own culture, customs, beliefs, traditions, and worldviews. Many First Nations believe everything is connected. First Nations have their own creation beliefs. The Inuit Inaktituk, for people, are an indigenous people, the, the majority of whom inhabit the northern regions of Canada. An Inuit person is known as an Inuk. There are eight main Inuit ethnic groups. They were hunters and gatherers who moved seasonally from one camp to another. Inuk adults harvest country food, which includes seal, whale, duck, caribou, fish and berries. The Métis. This group was formed after the Europeans arrived. The term is used to describe communities of mixed European and indigenous descent across Canada. The first Métis communities emerged during the Great Lakes fur trade in the 18th century. The blending of European and indigenous traditions has created a unique and rich Métis culture. Adopting indigenous bedding practices and popular European floral designs, the Métis created an art form all their own. The Métis could speak various indigenous languages and were often literate in French or English. So where do they live in Canada? Well, the majority lives in the north. 25% in Yukon, 50% in Northwest Territories, and 85% in Nunavut. The rest are scattered among provinces. The indigenous peoples speak different languages. And this is a map more or less showing the most spoken language, which is Algonquin. The indigenous peoples' dwellings. So we have the tipi for the First Nations, the longhouse also for the First Nations, and the igloo for the Inuit. Food. So we have marine life, like crab, seal, whale, fish, etc. Meat, like caribou, buffalo, duck, snake, turtle, etc. Vegetables, we have corn, squash, um, potato, nuts, etc. Clothing. So, we have war bonnets, we have moccasins, we have all types of um, fur coats. First Nations clothing was made from caribou skin or beaver fur. Inuit would wear caribou skin clothing and seal skin boots. Spirituality The elders pass down meaningful stories to younger generations through oral storytelling. 
The Dreamcatcher is a symbol of unity and is hung for protection. Transportation. So we have snowshoes, canoes, kayaks, toboggan, etc. So now let's take a look at a brief history of Canada. Jacques Cartier. He was a French explorer who came to Canada in 1534. There are three main reasons for his exploration. First, to find an alternate route to China. Second, to bring back gold, silk, and other riches. And third, to claim the land for the Queen of France. His exploration of the St. Lawrence River allowed France to lay claim to lands that would become Canada. He made three trips to the New World. During his first trip, he explored parts of Newfoundland, the southern shore of the Labrador Peninsula, and north shore coastlines on the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Cartier's first two encounters with the Aboriginal peoples in Canada, much, most likely the Mi'kmaq, were brief. Some trading occurred. His third encounter took place on the shores of Gaspé Bay with a party of St. Lawrence Iroquois, where an, on July the 24th he planted a cross to claim the land for France. And this is the map of the first voyage. You can see the red line is his voyage through the uh, Gulf of St. Lawrence. On his second voyage he explored most of the St. Lawrence River as you can see from the red line. The meeting of two cultures. What do you think happened when the Europeans and the First Nations met? Was it positive or negative? So let's pause the video and give your reasons. Now that you have paused the video and have your answers, let's look at my answers then. The positive outcomes. Well, they learned of new foods, salt and bread. The Europeans introduced them to woolen cloth. They were also given or traded iron weapons by the Europeans, which they became increasingly dependent on. What about the negative outcomes? Well, this is another story. The Europeans introduced them to alcohol, which had a tremendous effect on them. They brought diseases like smallpox, influenza, and measles, which killed thousands. The French tried to impose Christianity on them. Indigenous peoples versus Europeans. The indigenous peoples. They had the land and felt okay to share it. They wanted goods, money, and government assistance that the Europeans could offer. The Europeans, well, they really wanted to settle the land in Canada. They realized that the indigenous peoples would always be a threat without signing an official treaty. So what did they do? They signed a treaty. So the indigenous peoples or the indigenous rights. As the first people to live in Canada, indigenous peoples hold rights to Canadian land. But once the European settlers arrived in Canada, the indigenous peoples were pushed to the side. The government needed land in Canada to give to European settlers, so they asked the indigenous peoples to give it up and sign a treaty. The government promised the indigenous peoples to get fair payment for the land. So what can we do to help improve the quality of life and fulfill the rights of indigenous peoples? Well, one way we can help is to learn more about their cultures their way of life and to understand their needs. In this manner, we can determine the best methods of helping them. Well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions about indigenous peoples, you can post them under this video. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I suggest you do. If you liked the lesson, hit on the like button, please. And if you want, you can share the lesson. Until next time, bye-bye.